Let's return now to the U.S. response to the Israel-Hamas war and President Biden's trip to Israel today. For that, we turn to Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer. John, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. I want to begin with what the president said today about that hospital strike in Gaza yesterday, just to underscore it, because I think transparency is really important here. The president said it's based on U.S. intelligence that he can say that strike was not carried out by Israel. Is it fair to say the U.S. believes there is no way Israel could have been behind that strike? Oh, so what I can say at this point is, is basically exactly what the president said, which is that based on uh, our review of our own uh, intelligence on open source uh, information, including uh, photos and videos uh, that, that people at the scene have uh, presented on overhead uh, imagery, on, on intercepts of conversations, uh, we believe that Israel was not responsible for this uh, strike, that initial reports uh, were, were inaccurate. And, you know, we endeavored not to jump uh, to conclusions upon uh, receiving those reports. We did our uh, homework and our diligence to try to find out uh, what happened to the best of our ability and, and urge others uh, to do the same, because there are going to be many more uh, incidents reported during the course of this conflict. As you've seen and you know, there will be those who continue to believe that Israel was behind it, largely because Israel has carried out strikes on medical facilities and shelters and ambulances before. I wonder what kind of commitment did President Biden get from Prime Minister Netanyahu to stop targeting and stop hitting civilian and medical facilities? So I think one thing that's very important to say uh, with regard to the hospital is, is uh, regardless of who uh, ultimately was responsible uh, for the explosion, and we've made our views uh, clear, this was a, a horrific uh, tragedy uh, with a loss of life uh, that is almost uh, unimaginable. Uh, the president, uh, first and foremost, is is, is deeply uh, empathetic, empathetic human being. And so uh, part of the message that he carried with him uh, to Israel today was uh, a solidarity and empathy uh, to the people of Israel who have been through uh, an enormous tragedy with, in the wake of these Hamas attacks. Uh, but he also brought with him empathy uh, for the Palestinian community that is uh, suffering uh, right now in real time in Gaza, including uh, many innocent people who were caught up uh, in the attacks that, that took place uh, last night. Did he get a commitment from Mr. Netanyahu that he would minimize civilian casualties? We have been very clear, uh, and in president has been very direct, as he has said publicly in his conversations uh, with Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, that democracies are strongest when they act in accordance with the rule of law, with the laws of war, with international humanitarian law, uh, in particular during the conduct of, of military operations. That was a, a significant component of, of every conversation they have had, including the conversations uh, that took place today. Tell me about the, the conversations over the hostages, the American hostages in particular. Uh, does the U.S. want to see those hostages released before Israel carries out any kind of ground invasion? So uh, the, the Americans who are caught up in this situation are uh, uh, foremost uh, on the mind of the president and every single one of us. He has directed our entire team uh, to put this at the very top of our uh, list of priorities. Uh, we have uh, sent uh, expertise uh, to the region, uh, experts in hostage uh, recovery to consult with the Israelis who will be in the lead on, on all of this. And uh, we, we are going to do everything within our powers and our capabilities uh, to try to get these people home. But this is a very difficult situation. Uh, where these hostages are being, uh, exactly where they're being held is something that we are working on uh, determining, but we do not have uh, perfect visibility. We will share everything that we get uh, with the Israelis and do everything we can, as the president told uh, the, host the families of some of these people who are, who are in this situation uh, in the conversations he's had directly with them. Well, the president said a short time ago on Air Force One that he had a long talk about alternatives to a ground invasion with Prime Minister Netanyahu. What are those alternatives? So I'm not going to uh, detail uh, operational uh, conversations that the president had, uh, not just, by the way, with the prime minister, but with Israel's uh, war cabinet that has been assembled uh, to help manage this military operation. Those are obviously the most sensitive conversations uh, that take place between uh, two governments. But one of the things the president did uh, was travel to Israel, not just to show uh, solidarity, although that was a very important part of his message, but to make sure that, that uh, Israeli officials are thinking through all of the hard questions as they uh, tackle what is, uh, by all accounts, a very challenging uh, military problem that they are confronted with, which is uh, a terrorist organization that is hiding among uh, a population of more than two million people. And, and you know, the president is, is and our team, uh, national security team, is working with the Israelis uh, to try to think through how best to address uh, this challenge that they face. So John, is that to say that a ground invasion is not inevitable? 
Uh, I am not going to uh, predict and I'm not going to foreshadow uh, what exactly the Israelis are, are likely to do when it comes to their military operations. Wouldn't be appropriate uh, based on those conversations, and ultimately that will be a decision uh, that is up to them. But this was very much a, a topic of conversation uh, today uh, dur dur during the president's visit to Israel. And what about the Americans who are trapped in Gaza? There are reportedly hundreds of them. How is the U.S. going to get them out? Uh, so we have been in, in constant communication uh, with Americans who are uh, resident in Gaza, uh, some number of whom uh, we know would like to leave. Uh, getting out of Gaza is a challenging uh, thing to do under the best of circumstances. In a conflict like this, it requires uh, the forbearance of, of the government of Israel, which said today uh, that they would work to allow uh, humanitarian assistance in. That was a significant step forward that occurred in the context of the president's visit. But you also need uh, Hamas to allow people to move uh, within Gaza and to uh, the crossing into Egypt, and then the government of Egypt uh, to essentially open the door on the other side. And so we're working on all pieces of that diplomacy to get humanitarian assistance in, which the president said would happen soon, uh, and get people, uh, certainly American citizens and, and people who are wounded who want to get out of Gaza, uh, uh, out uh, uh, and, and out safely. When you say you're working on that, do I take that to mean that there is not currently a plan to evacuate those Americans, even as Israel continues its bombardment of that area? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of actual developments on the ground, but we are working uh, day in, day out to make sure that Americans who want to leave can leave, and, and we're going to continue to do that. In the minute or so we have left, I need to ask you about whether or not President Biden talked with Prime Minister Netanyahu about what happens after a potential ground invasion. I know you don't want to get ahead of operational details, but is there a conversation about who would take over that territory? So this is a, a significant challenge and a, and a very difficult problem. It's something that we have uh, done some thinking about in, inside our government. We know the government of Israel is, is thinking about it, too, uh, something that we will consult uh, with them about, with other uh, countries in the region that will have a stake in, in the future governance of, of Gaza. Uh, but we have not uh, ourselves arrived at a perfect solution uh, to this challenge, nor do we think that anybody else has. What the Israelis have said is that the status quo ante, uh, you know, the situation that prevailed before these terrorist attacks, uh, cannot uh, be restored. They cannot live with that. And so uh, that does leave open the question of what comes uh, on the day after. And, and we're going to continue to work through that problem uh, with them and with others. That is Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer joining us tonight. John, thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you.